here's what we're going to make in this video and we should be able to get it done in the one video it's pretty straightforward simple type uh, traffic light you could use these things for car headlights or something in a flashlight so uh, it might be useful just for that alone all right so here we are in blender and i'm going to bring in a cylinder we'll leave it like that go into edit mode and scale it in the z until you get a height that you think is reasonable something like that press 7 to look down from the top go to wireframe press b to border select or box select i think it is x vertices get rid of those go back into solid view press 2 for edge selection and shift alt and click this top edge f to make a face and this edge f to make a face shift alt and click there look from the front again i'm going to press e to extrude an sx and pull out just a little bit and then sz and pull out a relatively even amount with that still selected e to extrude pull it forward a little bit and f to make a face and we can go back into solid mode okay so there's the base of our traffic light we can add a bevel to this i'm going to go for three and i'll bring this to 0 0.03 maybe and shade smooth and just improve it a little bit let's see where can we see it over here maybe right here i'm going to come in under geometry and miter out out outer sorry i'm going to choose arc okay so that's what we have and let's double check that the faces are facing the right way now i'm going to come in and i'm going to drop an edge loop right there just one and then i'm going to come in here drop an edge loop that was control r by the way and control b to split it and i'm going to pull not too far or i'll start losing my bevel to about there and then uh, roll my mouse up and do another one there and control b and create a little space something like that all right so now what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll delete some faces and then we'll rebuild so we're going to get all these faces here and this one here as well like that and over on the other side right up to that edge that we put in okay x faces delete those faces now we'll, in edge selection select that edge and this one this one just be careful that you get the right edge that one, and that one okay so we have all of those and we're going to extrude down and make some new faces i'm going to turn on snap to edge and we're going to extrude down so we're going to press e to extrude pull down in the y and hover my mouse and press control i'm holding down control and i'm hovering over that edge so this has gone down as far as this edge right here so with this one selected and this one f to make a face so it's flat select this edge and this edge f and we're going to go around it'll take a minute or two to get all of these our bevel comes back Okay, we have that. You can see some shading issues. So to solve that, I will add weighted normal and normals auto smooth, and we can carry on. Before I do, I'll turn on the cavity shader, and I'm gonna go over here to both and pull these up and they'll look a little nicer. Okay, cool. Those striations are due to the change that I just made in the shading, so don't worry about that. Okay, from the front, we're going to add in a plane and go into edit mode RX90. We'll pull that out in front and look to the front again. Scale it down, pull this up, and just get, get a size that you think is okay. And we're going to add an array and we're going to move this down. Hold down shift and pull to the left so it goes downwards change this x value to zero and three and then just scale this a little bit until you get a size that looks okay there okay keep the array on for now and we're going to press e to extrude come back in the 
y direction x faces to get rid of the back faces take the whole thing and push it in and make sure it makes contact and goes in a little bit in edge selection i'm going to select these edges i'll be doing some destructive uh, beveling which i am known for as i bevel here we can watch this one that's a raid so i'm just actually watching that come down a little ways and roll your mouse up until you have five edges in there take this one control b pull down and we have those nicely beveled okay cool all right let's go into edit mode shift s cursor to selected to bring the 3d cursor there on the top one and uh, we can leave the array on again for now to see this let's bring in a cylinder i'm going to leave it at the default 32 go into edit mode scale it down a little bit and rotate x 90 and get a nice big circle in the middle there as big as you can get it that's fine like that okay shift d to duplicate it g to pull it out s to scale scale it down and bring it in to position it where you'd want some bolts and that looks good i'm going to p to break it out however so i've got that as a separate object so that i can mirror that the 3d cursor is still in the middle so i could just do it like this and then i'm going to shift and hold that and click that shift and click that and slash key to just focus on those things there and just have a look at this let's by the way double check our orientation you'll notice this is backwards so let's go in here and alt and recalculate outside so everything is blue polys are facing the right direction okay i'm going to apply that mirror and i'm going to hold shift and click that and control j to join those all right it's just easier to do the boolean this way all right we're going to select our arrayed plates there and add boolean drag it to the top leave it on difference and with the eyedropper click there you can see the holes down there and apply that take this and hide it let's not get rid of it and we'll come in here and i'm going to have to delete some faces here because of the way i did the boolean that's fine i'm just going to delete those faces like that all right now booleans can be quite messy so sometimes you have to do some repair work what i'm going to do is i'm going to shift and shift alt and click and try to get all around the circle and we're going to see how well we can bevel this it doesn't look too bad to me actually so we're going to give this a try the most important thing is to make sure that we've got everything selected and nothing extra but we can give it a try and see how it goes and you can look down here if you want maybe we'll do that Control b and pull and you want to have you know a few segments in there unless you want that chamfered look all right so that looks okay to me alt h to bring that stuff back we're going to come in here and select a piece of this and Control l p and break it out so we have these separate from that piece there i'm going to work on these ones going to edit mode and in face selection number three select all these faces and we're going to pull them through just like this until they're passed and they're about that size x faces get rid of them and come back and select these faces and make just really simple bolts out of this okay have a look control b pull have a number of segments select it all and pull it back in like that and those will be our bolts don't worry about shading right now okay this piece uh i'm gonna keep that let's pull it out there do something with that in a minute just get it right out of the way but don't don't move its position except for in the y let's come back in here now and see the shape of our circle it's looking pretty decent as a circle so i'm going to use it i'm going to press e to extrude and i'm going to come out like that and then i'm going to press e and s i want to make like a rim like structure e to extrude pull out a little ways e s and come in just past past uh, that and then e to extrude and back until you're way back here that's a, that's good enough right there let's hide that again get out of the way so this is what we have let's bevel this now two for edge selection select all these edges here and let's give them a little bevel and you can use as many segments as you want probably three is is sufficient 
All right, now um, I'm going to smooth this, but well, you'll see we'll have to do some more work on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slide an edge loop up here, and I'm going to slide an edge loop down here. And you see this nastiness here. I should be able to clear that up with a weighted normal and normals auto smooth. And it's looking just fine. And you can see it all the way down here. Okay. So we'll keep going now. Um, the next thing we're going to do is, let's see. I think I will Alt H and slash key bring everything back so we can have a look at how things are progressing. We're going to make a reflector at the back and we're going to use this piece right here, this cylinder. So I'm going to take the back edge and pull it up to about there. And then I'm going to control B to bevel, pull it to about there and roll my mouse up and get a bunch of segments there. Okay. Now I'm going to take this face and delete it. Take this and flatten it, scale in the Y. Just flatten it like this. That's probably okay. And I'm going to start pulling it in until it's just about at the back. And then I'm going to scale it down so it's just inside there and it doesn't poke through. I can take this and shade smooth. Let's have a look though, make sure things are facing the right way. That one's not, so let's go into edit mode, Alt N, and flip it. Again, we're all blue, so we're in the clear. So there's our reflector there. I'm going to do something with that again. In fact, I think we'll do it right now. Let's duplicate it, Shift D, pull it out, go into edit mode, and then rotate Z 180 degrees. And we're going to use this as the, um, the glass. I'll just put it there for now. And now, looking from the side, I'm going to bring in a curved circle. Go into edit mode and rotate X 90. I'm going to pull it to around there and scale it down until the vertices are just underneath. I'll pull it out a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to grab this center point right here. That'll select the whole thing look from the side and I'm going to pull it forward a ways to create that curved piece. But this part doesn't look right, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull it back until the Z arrow is sort of on the line and maybe a little bit more so that it sort of flattens out. So we have this. All right. Now, this is a curve, so I'm going to come to the curve dialog box and scroll up to resolution. I'm going to convert that to a mesh. I want to have enough points to keep it as a circle. So I'm not going to use 12. I'm probably going to use maybe 8. Oh, you know what? I'm going to throw caution to the wind. I'm going to use 10. Suppose I could have used the 12. The resolution is now 10. I want to convert that to a mesh. So right click, convert to mesh. I think I didn't do it yet. Convert to mesh. Go into edit mode, select it, and one. You see it's made of a lot of vertices. Okay, looking from the side, I'm going to press E to extrude and pull back in the Y. I'm going to straighten this out now by pressing SY0 and then I'm going to pull it forward till it's sort of like that. Let's have a look at this thing. Now, obviously, I don't want it sticking out the back, but we'll just have it a look. Okay, so far so good. We can adjust this. Let's go in though and Alt N, recalculate outside just in case any of the polys are facing the wrong way. Okay, go back into in now. You can use solidify. To give it some thickness but I'm just going to do this. I'm going to press E Alt S and I'm going to pull and give this a bit of thickness like that. I'm happy with that. Deselect slash key to focus on this and go into edit mode again. Press 3 for face selection and shift alt and click to select all those faces and delete them. Okay. Press 2 for edge selection and shift alt and click that edge and that edge, the two front edges. And let's bevel that just with three. Control B, pull, and roll back to zero. So I have two edges on each, one more. There. Control two for two subdivisions and shade smooth. So it is relatively high poly, I admit. Slash key to bring that back. And we have that piece on there. And then you can decide, you know, where you want to position it if you don't like it or or whatever. 
all right we're gonna start assigning some materials in a moment I think we'll do that actually right now so and we're gonna start joining some stuff so on the material tab click new and I'm gonna click I'm gonna type body and I'm gonna change this to a black color we're gonna come down close to black and I'm gonna bring the roughness down these are very simple materials bring the roughness down and let's go to material preview something like this I'm gonna select this stuff here and I'm going to give it the body material just like that this is gonna have the bot the body material as well but these bolts I'm gonna create a new material and I call this metal and I'm gonna change the color just a little bit bluish and I'm gonna bring the metallic all the way up and the roughness down to about 0.3 something that's all I'm gonna do for it for the metal I'm going to hide the glass actually no let's give that glass uh, a material right now let's call this glass but then I'm gonna hide it and this is the reflector let's call that reflector and this one is gonna be just you're not even gonna see it but it's just gonna be in there full metallic and zero roughness so it's like that and you just have to decide if it's pr if it's hitting the back it's not it's okay there okay now we're gonna start joining some stuff together um, I need to apply some modifiers that bevel I think I'm going to control a and apply it this one has an array on it I'm going to not apply that yet what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bolts and I'm going to join it to the arrayed parts and then they're everywhere I'm going to take this and I'm going to join it to that control J so now the reflector is everywhere uh, the glass will do separately so we'll just hide that and so everything is joined except for that I can now let me see yeah I'm gonna go ahead and apply the array and I'll take this and this and I'll control J and join those together okay so everything's looking good we have the reflector now with the 3d cursor still there I'm going to bring in a point light and we're gonna to have to do a little bit of work on this light I'm gonna pull it forward so it's in front of the reflector but behind the glass which we'll see in a minute I'm gonna call this point red and I might as well add some stuff right now to this light all right so we're going to come down to shadow and click on contact shadows that's all I'm gonna do for the moment uh, but I'll go ahead I'll make this red and I'll put it at like two watts and then looking from the front I'm gonna copy that shift D pull that down right around in the middle and I'm gonna call this point yellow and I'll just make that a yellowish color yellowish orange actually you'll see what happens shift D and pull that down I'm gonna call that point green and you guessed it okay so far so good so they all have contact shadows on but there's more to do okay we are ready to start working on the glass I believe so I'm gonna to come to the shading tab and let's maximize that so you can see what I'm doing I'm gonna bring the roughness down to somewhere around there 0.2 something um, we're gonna bring the transmission all the way up to one and uh, yeah let's do this so let's bring in a uh, vector bump and now we're going to bring in a texture wave not white noise we don't want that now we're going to bring in a texture wave texture I'll press Control T and switch this to object so I need the node wrangler and able to do that I'm going to leave it like this on the X bands on the X I'm going to take this and shift D and duplicate it I'm going to bring that down and I'm going to connect the vector here and we'll go back so we can see what's going on as we connect this all right there's more work to do on this but um, I want to join these together and the way I'm going to do that is with a math node I'm going to press converter math I'm going to set this on multiply and I'm going to take the fact 
right here, and I'm going to pull that down into the first one, and this fat into the second. So we're going to watch here as I connect this. Value is going to go into height. I'm going to change this right now to 0 0.5, and this one to 0 0.5, and I'm going to connect the normal to the normal of the principal BSDF. Give it a moment. Okay. Right now we have some vertical stripes. That's because these are both the same. So switch the second one to Z and you'll get this pattern. Now from here you can adjust the scale as you like, but I'm going to put this as 10 and this one as 10. You could make them smaller if you want, however, and that will give you that cool pattern. All right. Um, now, it's still not really see-through, so we're going to come over to the materials and scroll down to near the bottom and we're going to change the blend mode to alpha blend and we're going to click on screen space refraction and finally come up here turn on ambient occlusion bloom screen space reflections and open that up turn on reflection re refraction sorry and turn off half res and now we have that Okay. Now it's just up to you where you want to position that. Let's go back to layout and I can set the origin to, to geometry. I might want to pull that out a little bit. I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it down shift D and then do your best to position it you know in the middle. One of the problems we're going to have with Eevee is light leaking out. So I'm going to Go into, I think, individual origins and scale these it's just a little bit more. I just don't want them coming through, and we'll see. And I'll take this one, I'll go back to median point, and shift D, and I'll bring it down. So we'll have that. All right, let's try this out now. We've basically done all the modeling, and I can just come in here and select the point red, let's say. I'm going to change that. I'll start with 20,000. And over here, scene lights. All right, looking pretty cool. Now, let's see if we can uh, cut down some of this leaking out here of the light. Some of it's gonna be where it's positioned, but also you can try adjusting the thickness. Now watch as I uh, uh, pull the thickness to the right. Okay, so that did quite a lot for us. And then you can also play with the position, have it right under under there and see if that helps in any way. Or maybe that's not a good position. The other thing we want to do is to make sure that the light is in behind it. You can move it forward a bit if you want and play around with that. That's that one. Okay, let's set that back to about two. And let's try the green light and do the same same thing. Let's try 30,000. Okay, come down here. I'm going to bring the thickness up. Okay, so far so good. Okay, I'll bring that back to 2. And the orange light, or the yellow light. I'll just go 20,000. And up the thickness. All right. Still got a little bit of light in there, so very cool. Uh, another thing to do is maybe try an environment texture, an HDRI, find an HDRI of something like a city street, if that's what you like, and turn on the world, and turn these off, and you have your stoplight. Okay, and then you can just play around with these. Um, I find it really neat when I set this to two or zero just to watch it dim. It takes a second. Watch this. Kind of goes out like a, like a light would be. Let's bring that one up to 20. And just imagine there's our street light. All right. Rendered view for EVs, not much different. I'll show you how it looks in cycles. All right. I'll come to over to cycles. I'll leave all that, click render. All right, looks fine in, in cycles as well. Maybe it looks better to you. All right.
so that is the street light all right cool thanks for watching see you next time